So here we are again with a, another little knife modification video I'm going to be doing. Um, this is going to be one with flitanium scales on a Benchmade proper. This is the Benchmade 319 proper uh, with micarta scales. And I actually, if you happen to watch my Benchmade 940 video where I put on a second set of rock scale design titanium scales on that knife, just like that video, this video is actually a refire um, of a proper modification video, Benchmade proper modification video. For whatever reason, the first couple ones of these I did, the audio got corrupted on the, on the video files. So you could barely hear me on them. So I actually did a video where I put flitanium scales on this Benchmade proper, brass scales, and then I also put these copper flitanium scales on this uh, Spyderco Manix 2. Um, I will not be doing a refire on this because I did not enjoy that process all this much. This is one of the biggest pain in the ass knives I've ever taken apart and put back together. Uh, it turned out okay. It's a really cool looking knife, but I installed the uh, copper scales and the green titanium um, cage uh, ball cage on there. And what you see in front of you is just a few other knives that I've modified with flitanium stuff. I've got copper on this uh, paramilitary two. Uh, both of these Benchmade Bali songs, the um, Morphos, this is a 51 and a 32. They have titanium scales from Flitanium. These are actually made in the U.S., these scales. All their other stuff you see sitting here is made in China. I even have a little Flitanium fidget toy thing here. Uh, I had some eBay bucks to spend. So there's a little cube that's been machined into this outer cube. Just something kind of weird. Anyway, so there you see a few examples of stuff I've modified with Flitanium. Uh, so I guess we'll go ahead and jump into this modification. Let me get some of this stuff out of the way. Uh, when I did the proper, I was surprised. It, it, well, I don't know how surprised I was, but it really wasn't a very difficult um, process to go through. Sorry, I meant to take this lanyard off before I started the video, but I forgot. It's all right, it won't take but a second to undo. Um, but yeah, the, the proper was pretty straightforward. Uh, I didn't really run into any issues. Um, doing this one and I really really like this knife so I'll, I'll, while I'm doing this I'll talk for just a second about it so this was originally this is a first production run proper you can see there uh, 637 out of a thousand it had the red g10 scales on it um, and I really liked that knife but I just I loved the the idea of having brass scales on this that would patina over time I don't mind the extra weight that they add and I have really really loved this knife since I put these scales on there and I carry it in this little hitch and timber, um, I call it a pocket purse, but this is like my, I have several different models of this, but of these uh, leather uh, organizers that they make, but I keep this one with brass stuff. So I have a, a brass hinderer investigator pin here, their spiral pattern, and um, a brass uh, lumen top, uh, AAA tool flashlight. I got that from Mass Drop or Drop as they're now called. But that's how I carry my brass proper. And I was really torn on this one because I really like the mark, my Carter scales on it. And I like how lightweight it is. Um, I was like, well, I'm going to keep one light proper and then have the brass one that's heavy. But I just kept coming back to their website, Flytanium's website, and seeing these copper scales. I'm just like, you know, I really want that. And you know what? I forgot to pull out to show with those others, the one that rides in my pocket most of the time this Benchmade 940 with uh, copper flitanium scales on it. This is one of my favorites, uh, my favorite knives in my collection. I got a lot of them. Um, but I really, I kept looking at this and just, I was like, you know what? I want a proper that's going to patina like this and look like that. So I just, I had to get the scales um, and put them on there. So let's go ahead and pull this stuff out. You can see it comes with a little flitanium sticker there, proper scales in copper. Um, I have my toolkit here, as I show in all the videos I do doing this stuff. Uh, get yourself a set of high-quality tools if you're going to be messing with your um, valuable knives. Uh, these are made in Germany. They're hardened, hardened tool steel, precisely made so that they fit your fasteners really well and you reduce the chances that you're going to strip something out. Uh, and I also have my little tea drink here. This is black tea, vanilla chai. It's got a little Jack Daniels rye in it. And it also has this really great um, salted bourbon vanilla whipped honey. Really, really good. Makes a very tasty drink. All right. I think 
we need a T6 here. And as I mentioned in my other videos, um, I do, I'll try and keep this on frame, but I usually do look like bit underneath the phone while I'm doing this. Um, so if I get off frame, I'll try and get it back on there real quickly. But I'm not usually looking through the phone screen when I do this stuff. It is a T6 for this, and that should be on all the screws, same size. All right, set those off to the side for now. Grab a paper towel here just in case I need it. So, can't quite remember everything I did to this one to make it kind of easy. Um, so I'll probably fumble through a little bit. Um, there's one mistake I'll point out while I'm doing this that I will not, hopefully I won't make this time. If I do, I'll feel like a real idiot. But I'll point it out so if you happen to be going through this process, you won't get tripped up by that. So now that all those uh, male screws are out, we've got the female ones over here. I'm going to just take it apart. So here, the first micarta scale came off really easily. And then you can see the liners are skeletonized on this knife to reduce weight. But we are going to completely counteract that with these very weighty brass scales. And you can see they are not milled out or anything. It's just a slab, or I'm sorry, copper. Uh, the brass ones are heavy too, but these are going to be copper. They are not milled out or anything underneath. They are just a couple slabs of copper. Now here, I think it was a little bit difficult to get this guy off, um, this liner, so we'll take a look at that. I'm going to point something out real quick here. Notice that the little the uh, pivot female screw actually has a flat spot on it there. Uh, we'll get back into that in reassembly, but there are flat spots that correspond to that on each of the steel liners. So just keep that in mind when you're reassembling it. But we'll, we'll go over that as we're getting into it. And I think what I did was kind of work the blade a little bit here. Yep. So I put the blade to its half stop position. And when I did that, this liner came right off. And we can see there's a little gunk and stuff on there. So I'm going to just wipe it off real quick. That might be stuff from the manufacturing process because it's not really coming off of there. It's internal, I don't really care. And this blade does pivot uh, sandwiched in between a couple of phosphor bronze washers. So we'll have those. Um, and what I'm gonna do, this is your, this is your, uh, this is a slip joint knife. So this is the spring here on the back. I'm gonna put a little upward pressure on this maybe. Let's see if I can get there, she came. Just put a little bit of upward pressure in the blade and it's phosphor bronze washer slipped right off there. So I'm gonna set that off to the side. And we can see the other phosphor bronze washer sitting right there. So I got to push this pivot screw out because I need to be able to take the scales off and I'll set all that stuff over there. To, there's my other phosphor bronze washer to correspond. And this guy should lift right off the back spacer spring. So yeah, it came right off there. And this little guy, this is your stop pin. So make sure not to lose that because that'll slip right out of there. I'm gonna pull him out, set him off to the side for now. And I've got my other two screws. I'm just going to set them right here because they're, they're going to go pretty much right back on. So there's a knife fully disassembled. You got two liners, two scales. You've got three female screws, three male screws, and then your little stop pin. Um, you got the back spring, the two phosphor bronze washers, and the blade. So let's go ahead and start reversing it. That is all there is to disassembly. We're going to set the micarta scales off to the side and get my first copper scale here. So I'll go ahead and line the liner up with that. Take these two female screws, get them through there. These do not have a flat spot. These two um, on the back, they're just round, so, so they should slip in there pretty easily. Should slip in there pretty easily. Sure was causing my resistance here. Oh, you know what? Oh my gosh, I am stupid. Ah, early in this video to be looking stupid, they actually do have a flat spot. Look at that, dumbass. Yeah, so rotate those flat spots around. Ugh. This the flat spots on there are nice um, because, like, uh, if if you're familiar with like hinderer knives, they have this similar type of setup with these female screws that have no fastener head. 
nowhere for you to, to grab onto with a, with a bit over here. So this keeps the female screw trapped. Uh, some people say that like if you put a little blue Loctite or something on a hinder, they'll just spin together and, and it's very difficult to get them apart. So there I looked like a real jackass there. Um, these do have flat spots, so make sure that you line up those flat spots. Uh, it won't matter on the copper scale, but on the liner they will have a corresponding flat spot on the steel liner, so make sure you get those lined up. Okay, and I think the next thing we did, whoops, I slipped out of there. I'm going to take that female screw, stick it through this copper scale and spin it until the flat spots line up like that. Okay, ah, come on now. Get with it. Probably it'd be smart to get a little piece of like painter's tape or something and put over those so they don't keep doing that. I don't remember having this issue when I put the other one together. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get our uh, spring on there. He slipped right on. And I'm going to come back to the stop pin. I'm not going to put that in there quite yet. Actually, you know what? Last time I didn't. Okay, so let's go over this real quick. So you'll notice there are two holes here. Now, what I did when I reassembled my first proper is I was like, oh, look at this hole right here. That's where that stop pin goes. It's real easy to access. And I stepped that in there, reassembled the knife. It reassembled just fine. Everything looked perfect. I went to close the blade and hit that pin, and the blade wasn't closed because that stop pin goes there. Okay, If you put it in that hole like I did, your, your knife will not close. It's bad stuff. You're going to have to take it apart and redo it. I'm just going to see it'll be any easier to put that stop pin in there right now because I had a little bit of trouble once I got the blade on the first time um, because it, it's kind of tight with the blade there's not a lot of room to work there so I'm going to see if that guy stays in place uh, I'm going to put my first phosphor bronze washer there and remember we do have the flat spot on this screw just like on the other two screws I tried to lie to you but if I can get this thing to focus I really don't want to put this one down there you can kind of see that flat spot so I'm going to insert it through the copper scale and just rotate it until I feel it. There we go. All right, so now I'm using my fingers to hold up all three of these screws, the pivot and the two uh, spring, back spring screws there. I'd probably, like I said, I'd probably be a lot smarter if I got like some blue painter's tape or something to put over these, but we're just going to go ahead and roll with it because I don't want to get up and stop the video. So next, I'm going to put my blade on there. Now the blade, you'll have to push up on that See, that was really easy. Just a little bit of pressure. Just push that way on the back spring. Just enough so that blade will slip right in there. My phosphor bronze washer. I'm sorry, that's getting blown out. I can see that. So there we go. It slipped on there real easily. And now um, there should be enough pressure to keep that pivot uh, screw in there. Probably, oh yeah. So if I'm putting a little, I'm pushing down on these right now, there's plenty of tension now to keep all three of these screws on there. So I don't have to worry about them falling out. My stop pin actually stayed in place. So this is going pretty smoothly. So next step, I'm going to get this liner. And you do have to make sure that the stop pin goes through its hole as well as all three of these. And I do remember kind of having to finesse this a little bit. Like I said, I'm looking around the camera right now. So I'll try and keep... Oh, so the pivot slipped right in there. Oh, slipped out too. Okay, so I got my pivot screw is all the way through there. My stop pin... Looks like this guy is, and this guy's the last one. I cannot remember. I think maybe I ran into this last time where um, those all slipped in easily, and this last one didn't. I had to, oh, no, it slipped right in there. Wow, this one's going really smoothly, except for my dumbass uh, little mistakes I keep making with flat spots. So right now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm pushing upwards on these screws to make sure they extend as far as possible up through all the pieces. So now we have our knife sandwiched back together. Um, stop pins in the correct place. Let's just go ahead and look at that. Yep, my blade closed there. So see what happened was that stop pin, I had it in there because it will go back together like that. And the blade got right about there and wouldn't close anymore. And it was, I was immediately knew what I'd done because I looked in there and you could see the stop pin sitting in the way. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this at half stop. It looks like everything's together. Let's see how easily this copper slab slips on here. Very easily. I think it did push down on this bottom one though. Yeah, it didn't slip through there. So I'm gonna pull that back off and take a look again. So it's still, it's still through the liner. So I'm gonna push it back up. 
But I'll tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open this all the way and just see how that does. If it's any easier to line everything up. My pivot screw there. And it looks like those two are lined up. So we got, it looks like everything's flush back there, but my pivot screw isn't through. It looks like it's not quite lined up with the hole. So I'm gonna put a little downward pressure in this direction to see if maybe I can get that. And I think what I did before is kind of worked the blade a little bit too. So all the parts kind of move. Oh, I think that did it actually when I pushed it down to half stop. I think it went through, I think. Yep. So I went and went ahead and pushed it. It got pushed down this way a little bit, so I'm pushing back up on it. And everything looks pretty good. Let's take a look all the way around. Looks like all the parts are pretty well sandwiched together. All right. I think we're ready to go ahead and dis or uh, put the uh, male screws back in there. And as I mentioned in my 940 video, so what I'll do here when I reassemble a knife, I just I usually just take the bit out of the handle and just screw these down to get them engaged. I'm just going like for barely snug here, just to get everything back together. And the degree to which I have to uh, mess with this stuff varies based on the kind of knife. Uh, some like frame locks, they prefer their screws to be put in a certain and tightened in a certain order to get good frame centering, stuff like, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, blade centering and stuff I found. Maybe you'll run into that with Omega Lock knives and knives and stuff too, but. This guy really shouldn't be, I'm really just gonna get these screws in there, get them kind of snug with just the bit. Um, and then we'll go ahead and put the handle on. And when I go to tighten these, as I mentioned in the other videos I do, so I just take, I just get these finger tight. So I just pinch this with like three fingers. I'm not cranking on it like a motorcycle throttle. It's, that's really not necessary. So just take this, tighten it down. And I'm not doing these in any particular order for any reason. Uh, I'm just gonna do these two back screws and then I'll go to the pivot. So I'll do that. And then I'll typically kind of go back and forth um, on these, or if, if it's a knife with, you know, all kinds of screws on either side, I'll go to opposite sides and whatever, and just go around a couple of times and make sure that those fasteners are tight. Because as I tighten these two down, it, it may uh, allow me to tighten the other one a little bit more. All right, so now we can come up to the pivot. And of course, this is gonna, how much tension you get on this is gonna vary based on how you want the action of your knife. Uh, do you care if there's a little bit of side to side play? Um, or are you trying to get that all out of it? You know, whatever. But so there we've got it reassembled. It's pretty well centered. Uh, my brass was the same way. Pretty well centered. And it was a little bit, I like my knife actions to be a little bit tight. So I'm going to tighten that pivot screw a little bit more. Yeah, I don't, I don't notice any difference in like the action from swapping out the scales or anything. Um, but I, th I think that'll pretty well do it. I mean, there there you go. Uh, if you're looking for a knife to modify, these proppers are pretty easy to do. And you can really get some good deals on these Benchmade proppers on the secondary market. Uh, I've seen these things go in the 80s for barely used or like new in box examples. Um, so take a look at them. You know, if I'm, I'm, a fan, I'm a fan of all kinds of knives. You know, I've got butterfly knives and automatics, spring assist, frame locks, omega locks, fixed blades, and I like slip joints. I got a lot of slip joints, and I've got some nice ones from, I've got uh, the slip joints from Hinderer, the Slippy XMs. Uh, I've got a Chris Reed and Penda, a really nice, very pricey slip joint, but I like them. I think they're, I think they're neat, and I, I think they have a place, so... I think those are a couple of good looking knives. Uh, this one has really gotten a nice patina going on. I'm really looking forward to carrying this one and hopefully it'll start looking like my Benchmade 940 because I really love the uh, patina that that copper has gotten. I think it looks really great. So yeah, I like the Benchmade propers. I know not everybody does, but they were, they were the first nicer slip joint that I got that wasn't like a case 
uh, or something. Not to, not to bash case or anything, but just just something with a little higher tier materials. These have S30 um, V blades and such. So yeah, there you go. I don't think there's really much else to say about it. Bench made proper flytanium scales in copper and brass. I hope you found this video uh, somewhat interesting, maybe helpful if you're looking to to modify one of these. Thanks for watching.